Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr Edwards is going to be taking you through meiosis. So all of the different cell stages and all the variation that's produced because of it. Meiosis. So in meiosis we are looking at the production of gametes. So we're going to use human gametes as an example here. So we have our egg cell, which is our female gamete, and our sperm cell, which is our male gamete. Both of them contain 23 unpaired chromosomes in their nucleus. When they fuse together during fertilization, they form a fertilized egg cell, which then becomes a zygote. When the nuclei fuse together, we get 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. They become the paired chromosomes that we talk about because you have one chromosome from each gamete. So we have a chromosome one from the egg cell and a chromosome one from the sperm cell and they become a pair of chromosome ones. And then you have chromosome two and three and four and so on. So meiosis is the type of cell division that produces these gametes. And remember these are cells that are haploid, or we describe them as haploid because they have half the number of chromosomes of that normal body cell. Being haploid, having half the DNA is what's important. It's so that it allows these gametes to take part in sexual reproduction and fertilization, so where the nuclei fuse together in order to restore the chromosome number. So we get back to the full set of chromosomes needed for a body cell. So that new nucleus in the new zygote, the fertilized egg cell that they've made, is a diploid nucleus. So it has all of the chromosomes that it needs. It's also important that they can do this because it's the way we introduce genetic variation, because we're making a new, unique combination of those different parental chromosomes. We've already looked at mitosis, so let's have a quick comparison of the two to make sure that we, we're happy with those basic differences. So in mitosis, we're going to replicate the DNA. This means that each chromosome is replicated or copied, and then it's the copies of each chromosome that are separated when the cell divides. So you get a copy of every single chromosome, all 46 chromosomes, and a copy goes into one cell and another copy goes into the other cell. So when it divides, it forms two genetically identical cells that both have the full number of chromosomes they should have. So we make two genetically identical daughter cells that are diploid from one cell. In meiosis, we still start with each chromosome being replicated, but the cell divides twice and there's no replication in the middle. So in the first division, homologous chromosomes split up. So we split up the pairs of the chromosomes. And then in the second division, the chromatids of each chromosome are separated. This creates four, because there's two divisions, four non-identical daughter cells. And they're non-identical because they didn't just receive identical copies in each cell, they actually got half of the number of chromosomes from the original cell and a random mixture of different parental copies. So these cells are described as haploid. So you can see here, we start off with four chromosomes in my original cell. With mitosis, we still end up with four chromosomes. They are just not replicated in the top one because they go back to being normal and not duplicated until they go through the cell cycle again. And in meiosis, we only have two chromosomes in each cell. So as we said, diploid cells have pairs of chromosomes. We know we have 23 pairs in each cell in a human. So each pair is made up of one maternal and one paternal chromosome. So one came from the sperm and one came from the egg. We call this pair a homologous pair. They're not identical copies because they came from two different parents and they can carry different alleles. So although they carry the same genes, so chromosome one genes will be the same on the paternal chromosome as on the maternal chromosome, the alleles for those genes could be different. So for example, the gene for hair color, you could have a blonde hair allele on one chromosome and a brown hair allele on the other chromosome. 
So here's my example. I have a homologous pair of chromosome in my nucleus and the red purple colored one is from parent one and the orange colored one is from parent two. So this constitutes a homologous pair. When these chromosomes replicate, which we know happens during the cell cycle, they then look like two cross shapes, a pair of cross shaped chromosomes. So the two purple ones are identical because they have been replicated. They are copies of the parent one chromosome and they are identical. But the orange and the purple chromosomes are non-identical because they are from different parents. You need to be able to recognise chromosomes, replicated chromosomes and homologous pairs of chromosomes in diagrams like this so that if you are shown a diagram, you can tell whether that cell is going through mitosis or meiosis, if the DNA has been replicated or if it has not. The first series of stages in meiosis is known as meiosis 1. So in prophase 1 in my first image, my chromosomes have condensed so I can see them. They are not in interphase and chromatin. They are condensed into chromosomes that are visible and the nuclear envelope has started to break down. The spindle fibers have started to form, which you can see are these white, uh, the white band here, and the centrioles, which are kind of the spiky white shapes, are migrating to the poles of the cell. The homologous pairs of chromosomes start to line up next to each other. So the two chromosome ones will go next to each other, the two chromosome twos will go next to each other. And this allows something called crossing over. To Crossing over is when the arm of one chromosome is going to cross over the arm of its homologous pair. Where they wrap around each other, the point at which they are connected and they join is known as a chiasma or chiasmata in plural. They break at this point and they rejoin. But when they rejoin, they swap their chromosome that they rejoin with. So my section of my parent two chromosome is going to rejoin with the parent one chromosome and the section of parent one chromosome is going to rejoin with my parent two chromosome. So here they are, we've now made two recombinant chromosomes which have a new combination of alleles that wouldn't have existed if this crossing over hadn't taken place. So alleles that were on the parent one chromosome can now be inherited on the parent two chromosome and vice versa. On to metaphase one. The homologous chromosome pairs now line up along the equator of the cell. Independent assortment or independent segregation now occurs. So this is where the position of the maternal and paternal chromosomes either side of the equator is decided at random. So you'll see on my diagram, I have a parent one chromosome at the top for the first pair of chromosomes, and then the parent one chromosome is on the bottom for the other pair of chromosomes. So the top row is going to move up towards that top pole, and the bottom row of chromosomes is going to move down to the bottom pole, and they will end up being in separate gametes. But because the positioning is random, it means that a random mix of paternal and maternal chromosome copies will end up in each gamete. Spindle fibers are coming out from these centrioles and they will attach at the centromere of each chromosome. As well as crossing over, independent assortment at this stage is really important because it's another way of introducing genetic variation in meiosis. Anaphase 1. So the homologous chromosomes from each pair are separated and pulled by contracting spindle fibers to the opposite poles of the cell. So because they're separated, as we said, each new cell will then have one copy of each chromosome, either maternal or paternal. Telophase one, the nuclear envelopes will form. The chromosomes will also start to uncondense. Finally, cytokinesis will occur. So the division of the cell membrane and a cytoplasm happens, which forms the two cells. These cells are already haploid. They contain 23 chromosomes, so one of each number, but they do not have 23 pairs. They only have 23, and they look like they do in the diagram because remember they are, have been replicated at the start of this process, just before prophase one. 
So meiosis one takes a cell that is diploid that has 23 pairs of replicated chromosomes and creates two haploid cells that have 23 replicated chromosomes. Now onto meiosis two, which is going to make our four cells. So prophase two, the chromosomes recondense, the nuclear envelope breaks down again, the centrioles replicate because there would only have been one in each cell after it divided. And so they move to the poles and then they start to form spindle fibers again. Metaphase two. So the 23 chromosomes line up along the equator. The spindle fibers that are being produced by the centrioles move out and connect to the centromere of each chromosome. Anaphase two. The chromosomes split apart at the centromere and the two chromatids are pulled separately to the poles of the cell by the contracting spindle fibers. So remember, these are the replicated copies of that chromosome. So there are two copies of chromosome one, two copies of chromosome two that are identical, except for those that have crossed over. So this is more like what would happen in mitosis, where we would have replicated copies of all 46 chromosomes line up, and then their chromatids would separate, so they have a replicated copy of each going to each pole of the cell, except in that case, they are identical copies going to each cell. In this case, we have slight differences in some of them where crossing over has occurred. Telophase two and cytokinesis. I've combined these together um, because it happens pretty quickly. Same thing as before, so the chromatids would start to uncondense, the nuclear envelope would reform, the cell membrane and the cytoplasm divide, which is cytokinesis, to form four new non-identical haploid gametes. So meiosis II takes us from two haploid cells that each contain 23 replicated chromosomes, and we create four haploid cells, but this time they have 23 non-replicated chromosomes. And in each of these is a unique mix of paternal and maternal chromosomes and copies of chromosome one and two from the same parent, but that could have different alleles due to crossing over. So now we've gone through that process in detail, let's sort of recap what the differences are between meiosis and mitosis with that extra detail that we now know. So meiosis creates genetic variation through crossing over, which happens in prophase one, and independent assortment, which is the random lining up of the homologous chromosomes, and segregation, which is the pulling of the random chromosomes into the new cells, that happens in metaphase one. This is obviously in contrast to no genetic variation being created in mitosis. At the end of meiosis one, each cell has one chromosome from each homologous pair, but at the end of mitosis, cells have both chromosomes from each homologous pair. They are just not replicated chromosomes. So overall, mitosis produces uh, two genetically identical cells from one cell division, whereas mitosis produces four genetically non-identical cells or genetically unique cells through two cell divisions. You need to be able to spot and tell whether meiosis or mitosis is happening in diagrams and what stage of meiosis you're seeing in the diagram. So you can clearly tell the difference between the stages in meiosis one and meiosis two, because in meiosis one, there are pairs of chromosomes. In meiosis two, they are not, and they are individual chromosomes. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. Mm -hmm.